Hello and welcome to the Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem podcast. We have me, Silver, and our other host is... Chaotic. We are joined by a special guest today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Hobby Tan. Very excited to be here. <laughs> We're excited to have you. Silver, you hesitated too fast on that. I was talking to a child. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are very excited to have you here. You and Chaotic are part of the same stream team? Uh, yeah, that's correct. The clock tower. Uh, I had something in my head that just went boo out the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heck, do I know that feeling? <laughs> <laughs> we are here today to talk about a certain monster. I, from what I read, uh, my pronunciation is Wolver. Is that mm -hmm. correct, Tan? That's, uh, that's how I've always pronounced it. Yeah, the Wolver. And do you want to go on notes first? You want me to go on notes first? And how um, you want to? Uh, I'm not sure. Like, um, I'm interested to see what notes you came up with. Uh, I, th I think you may have found the same info that I did. Um, based on the little conversation we had previously, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I can go with some of my notes in first, then you can add in if I have forgotten anything. Works for me. So the Wolver is a monster from the Shetland Islands over in Scotland. It's like the northern part of Scotland. It is a bipedal wolf man that some people classify as a werewolf. Yep. Yeah, um, I personally disagree with that classification. I think the, the wolver is more akin to like a dog man. Um, mm -hmm. And I know there's some people out there that would say, oh, that's basically the same thing, but they are different. There's very important differentiations between um, werewolves and dogmen or wolfmen. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with you on that. From my research, I've seen that he is definitely not quite a werewolf. But I've seen that he usually has a man's body and a wolf's head. Does that sound right? Yep. So, the wolfer isn't a malicious creature, from what I've seen. Yeah, it's it's interesting, really. Like everything I've seen about the Wolver, either falls into one or another category. There's sort of two categories of Wolver sightings. There's the sort of the whispers, the rumours, the oral tradition of Scotland, where people talk about this very benevolent creature that catches fish and leaves it on the windowsills of poor families. Um, and that goes into battle for small towns when um, they're being invaded. Um, and then there's the couple of eyewitness accounts I've been able to find that are never people that are from Scotland, that have <laughs> always done something that would frankly annoy me if I was a wolver, and then they get attacked. So, you know, I I'm not victim blaming here, but... You know, if, if you've done something to upset the locals, maybe there's a reason they're not very friendly with you. <laughs> yeah. I did not hear about the go in the battle one. That is new for me. Oh, really? Yeah, that was one of the, the neat ones that I found. Um, so there's stories of when certain parts of Scotland were being invaded. Uh, I want to say in the 1800s. My my concept of time is terrible at the best of times. The, there were reports of the Wolver actually going into battle with those small towns to try and help defend them and fight off the invaders, which is pretty neat. That's super helpful to have a wolfmate on your side. Yeah. And he can fish too. Yeah, that's true. I see why you wanted to give me a fish now, Silver. Thank you for that. <laughs> Let's wait and see if you catch on. <laughs> <laughs> I also seen that 
he also helps lost travelers in the woods, guiding them back to town. Yeah. And he'll wait outside your house with fish as well. If someone is dying or has died, as he'll yep. mourn outside your door. Yep. That could be seen as intimidating, I'd imagine. If you just see a big <laughs> wolf outside your door after somebody... Just holding a fish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From all accounts of people within the Shetland Islands and the surrounding area, it seems the wolver is really, really sweet. And, you know, just wants to be left to do his own thing and will just come and do nice things for people when he feels it's right to do so. I kind of like him. Wholesome cryptid. <laughs> yes. I see. Uh, they also named the Cern Rock after him, that the flat stones in near bodies of water, they call Wolver Stains. Yes. Wolver Stones. Yeah. That's where he sits and does his fishing. Mm hmm. And then uh, he'd, I see it seen it or i heard it on somewhere that he lives in like a burrow type deal in the sides of hills yes the, there's actually some speculation that there's an entire family of wolver that live in those burrows and that you only ever see whichever of the wolvers it is that is you know a, the designated fisher of the day out on the wolver stones which would make sense i guess yeah they just take their turns fishing. Yeah. And I, I imagine they eat the fish themselves, so they're probably, what's that word, uh, pescatarian? Maybe? Yeah. Potentially. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that they might be able to get their uh, hands slash paws on. I think probably not without disrupting the, the humans in the area, so yeah. Yeah, unless they get other like aquatic life like otters or turtles mm, otters maybe turtles mm, not so much if it's an otter they need to throw it back <laughs> <laughs> i imagine they probably would kayak has a rivalry with otters <laughs> they're the true yeah. enemy of everyone the true <laughs> enemy oh finally someone that understands <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have opinions on otters, and most people don't like to hear them. Yeah, I, um, my my best friend Songbird, she got an otter plush at her local aquarium place, and so I disturbed her with stories of otters, and now she can't look at it the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been banned from telling people otter facts. I think we've done two otter-related episodes. We did the we got the otters on the moon rabbit somehow. Then we did the King Otter. I don't remember his actual name, though. It'll come to me. It'll be like, it'll be three in the morning, and you'll be like, that's <laughs> what it was. Do you think they trade their fish for for goods? How Like how they get their fishing poles? Or do you think they just make their own fishing poles? Hmm. I I suspect they probably make their own fishing poles, but I think it's perfectly possible that they could have some amount of trade going on with like local villages and things like that mm -hmm. certain amount of um nobody's gonna tell on them that they've been trading with those villages because who would believe that you'd been trading with a giant wolf man <laughs> that is very true so that's kind of the all i had on my little notes section <laughs> <laughs> but I did see you mention that some people think the wolver isn't a part of folklore, that they call it fake lore. Ooh, now that's one that didn't come up in my research. I'm intrigued. <laughs> it leads back to a folklorist called Jesse Saxby, mm -hmm. who is reported to be the first one to write down about the wolver in her book. The book is called Shetland Traditional Lore, and apparently that's the only other place people can find the stories of the Wolver written down at, and the oldest, which came about in like 1932. <laughs> so... I have a I have a Wolver sighting that was written about in 1912. Mm -hmm. So... 
maybe not so much with the fake law. That that yeah. that'd be kind of neat. <laughs> yeah, um, Elliot O'Donnell in his book, very uh, cleverly titled "Werewolves," has um, the first written document of a uh, wolver sighting in it. Okay, and that's one of the uh, non-Scottish folks that got attacked by a wolver. So they say in that specific report, there was a grandfather and his grandson who had gone away for um, like an archaeological holiday because grandfather was really into archaeology. And he found the body, the skeleton of uh, a man, but it had a wolf's skull. And he, he was very much of the belief that the the Shetland Islands and the Hebrides were all kind of full of satyrs, werewolves, all those kind of creatures. Um, so super excited that he's found physical evidence of a werewolf. Uh, takes the skull back to the shack or cottage or whatever that they're staying in. And um, a very angry wolver shows up to reclaim what belongs to them. <laughs> <laughs> which I, th I think is perfectly reasonable. Um, you know, yeah. disturbing somebody's family's graves. Um, the general theme here seems to be if you've been attacked by a wolver, you probably deserved it. You you probably oh, yeah. deserved it. <laughs> Both of the written accounts I was able to find of wolver sightings where the wolver wasn't just, you know, being the nice, wholesome cryptid that we've already talked about. Both occasions... A, a wolver grave had been disturbed. Yeah. Warning, beware the grave robbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, if you're going to rob graves, make sure they're not wolver graves because they will come for you <laughs> and they will not stop. I think that warning kind of transcends the most uh, other monster species. I know draugers really don't like it either. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fair. Like, just don't disturb graves. Simple as. I just remembered something as well. Uh, they say that wolvers are also evolutionary wise. They don't evolve from humans. They came from wolves. So wolves are getting more bipedal than humans are getting wolf. Yeah, that that's a, another really interesting one. Obviously, without any kind of physical evidence, uh, without any kind of body that we can examine, we can't prove that. But... The, the two schools of thought where wolves are concerned generally are wolves have learnt to walk on their hind legs and are getting more peoply, or it's actually just some people with a really severe case of generalised hypertrichosis, which is also known as werewolf syndrome, which for anyone that doesn't know is a condition whereby your body, either in full or in part, is covered with thick fur-like hair. Uh, it's quite a rare condition and it is a recessive gene as well. So it's not very likely to be passed down directly to your children. But that was one thought on what could be the source of the, the wolver myth was somebody in the Shetland Islands that had generalized hypertrichosis and it was quite a severe case of it. So just a nice dude that kind of looks like a wolf handing out free fish. Yeah, it's a classic case of be the cryptid you wish to see in the woods. <laughs> that pretty much covers all my notes. I had hyper, 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 hyper trichosis <laughs> <laughs> on my list as well. I think the only other thing I have in my notes is that um, the Shetland Islands, especially, but most all of Scotland has a lot of Norwegian and Scandinavian influences. Uh, Shetland Islands, specifically because it didn't actually become part of Scotland until the 15th century. Mm -hmm. And they also have over 5,000 archaeological sites just in the Shetland Islands alone. It's steeped in history, mythology, and because of where that sort of mythology and that kind of mindset is coming from as well, things like the wolver are fairly common in Scandinavian and Norwegian uh, folklore. 
So it makes a lot of sense that a character, a creature like this would pop up in somewhere like the Shetland Islands as sort of a cultural phenomenon, for want of a better description. There's definitely a lot of uh, sites to be digging at, learning. So many wolver graves. <laughs> the last time they were spotted I seen was a hundred years ago, so hopefully yeah. they're still in hiding, maybe? Yeah, I I'm hoping that the, the wolvers have found a nice little spot where they can just, you know, do their thing and chill out and get some fishing in. And mm -hmm. maybe just if the time comes and humanity needs them again, they'll be there with their fish and their homemade weapons to defend us and support us however we need. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Chaotic? I, so I walked into this knowing nothing, and the little that I did look up, it was, you know, my first reaction is werewolf, like lichen, like there be, like, that's, that's what I was, like, headed towards, and I, I really like the, the fact that, like, they help the locals, I think that's really unique, I, I just, I, I mean, overall, walking into this monster surprised me, because at first glance, you think werewolf, and so it's just really neat to learn that it, how different from a werewolf it is. I'm glad you feel that way. Chaotic. Are you a friend of Wolver now? Oh, oh yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> I suppose we didn't actually explain why we didn't think werewolf and why we both lean more towards dogman, did we? We should probably do that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> uh, the reason I don't think the Wolver is, should be classified as a werewolf is because usually those classified as werewolves can shape change between the human and wolf or human wolf mm -hmm. hybrid. But the Wolver is all hybrid all the time. Yep. 100% agree with you there. That's why I say they're more like a dog man because obviously and, dog men don't shape shift either. Yep. And I don't. I'd assume they probably still have the same weakness as a werewolf, though, because most creatures do have weaknesses to silver bullets. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if you shoot somebody, they're gonna they're gonna feel it. <laughs> if you shoot him, he just won't give you any fish anymore. Yeah, exactly. He he'll be very upset with you. Like he he's he's got a a canid sort of face, so surely he must be really good at the uh, puppy dog eyes. Yes. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine seven foot tall pu puppy dog eyes? I'm not sure I'm okay with that. <laughs> Usually puppy dog eyes are looking up at you. Looking down might be a little more intimidating than... Uh... <laughs> well, you definitely feel guilty. Yeah. <laughs> I would 10 out of 10 try to, try to befriend no matter what, I think. Um, because I have a chronic problem where if it, if it looks like it's pettable, I want to pet. Oh yeah, I am... 100% there with you. I would recommend against Boop and the Snoot. Unless you've got consent. Yes. Yes. Consent is key. <laughs> but if I could get consent, I would totally Boop a, a Wolf or Snoot. This is kind of leading more into mayhem, but I would also be my hypothetical guess that the Wolfer does speak a language common to the area. Uh, yeah, probably Garlic, I would wager just to kind of help him communicate, and then everybody started moving away from that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's getting a resurgence in more recent years. There's a lot of schools that uh, teach Gaelic in various bits of Scotland. There's um, there's a lot of night courses that people can take. Uh, I've got a couple of colleagues uh, at my workplace that are learning, and there, there is a push towards bringing it back to the forefront um because frankly it's uh, the english's fault that more uh, that less people speak it now so folks in scotland are trying to push back against that and i am very supportive of them well that's super cool <laughs> it really is fun fact chaotic on the map the shetland islands are right next to your favorite set of islands where one of your favorite monsters is from oh the orkney islands Oh yes. Wait, hang on a minute. <laughs> what, what? What's your one of your favorite monsters, Chaotic? I feel like he's lying about it being my favorite. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's a Nexus favorite, but 
Oh, not the knuckle of E. I'm out. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun how two, uh, two different islands can have such different monsters. Oh, yes. <laughs> such close proximity, such wildly different creatures. The Orkney Islands seem to have a lot more uh, malicious monsters in Shetland. Yeah, I wonder why that is. That That's definitely worth looking into, I think. So, we usually do media, Tan. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you spotted the wolver in any modern-day media? There is, to my knowledge, only one piece of modern media that has contained something called a wolver. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, I have said that in a very specific way for reasons which I think, if you've also found this information, are obvious to you, Silver. <laughs> yes. So I, I think, and I'm gonna probably going to get this wrong because I'm a little bit fuzzy-headed. I, I, I had my COVID boost the other day and it has really knocked me for six. But I think it was in the Witcher series, or was it God of War? It was either Witcher or God of War, but one of them has the Wolver turn up as an enemy. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a particularly aggressive enemy from what I've read. N neither are series that I've played, so I know nothing about it other than what I've read there. Yeah, it was uh, God of War Ragnarok. Ah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, it's not a very friendly or good depiction of the wolver even though it has its same name yeah it's very vicious yeah it, it feels like they've just taken your sort of typical fantasy werewolf and renamed it to make it more air quotes interesting <laughs> i believe so that's what it seems like i have not played the game either mm -hmm. but uh it's on the list i have seen gameplay of it and the wolvers and they are definitely look more stereotypical werewolf-ish. Yeah. The fantasy type. Uh, I also found one more. Ooh, do tell. I count it as modern day media, but uh, there's a YouTube stop motion video about the wolver. <gasps> oh, really? I'd love to see that. It's called the Wolver Stain. It's stop motion. It is made by Ethan bork or it's on his page at least he only has 21 subscribers on his youtube page but and that's his only video is just that wolverstein mm, i'll have to check that kinda, out it goes through all this information that about the wolver and everything oh cool there's also uh podcast episodes like this one and different other informational youtube videos about it plus that one uh the two books we mentioned there is another uh, book as well that came out in 1933 uh, by the Reverend Montague Summers, also called Werewolves, because nobody can get what the wolver is, right? That has another account of a wolver grave being disturbed and the wolver getting angry about it. There's also, uh, I'm not sure if this technically counts, but there's a, an absolutely fantastic artist on Twitter whose name escapes me right now, but I will get that for you in a second, who does absolutely beautiful wolver art. Yes, that definitely counts. Uh, it is a Wolf Hide Lowlander. Um, I'll pop that in the Discord for you. Uh, they do some absolutely amazing werewolf and wolver art. Um, varying degrees of like horror level in there. Uh, sometimes it's just straight up wolf other times it's uh going right into the horror cryptid zone um and it's all really really pretty stuff Ooh, that's cool very talented artist listeners should go check them out as well there was several little artists on like musical artists on spotify too i found i think one of them had a real good song about the wolver really like, you hear a lot of uh, musicians doing songs about Mothman, but a song about the Wolver, don't mind if I do. <laughs> the song is actually called Wolver. It is by Willow Changelings. Good name. I love that. Yeah, I was about to say, that name is phenomenal. And he actually is a kind Wolver, is how they depict him in the song. Oh, wonderful. Provoked you, provoked, then you won't stand a chance. Do you know about our mayhem section? 
Um, no, I do not. Chaotic, would you like to explain? Um, for our mayhem section, we have a university of mythological creatures. Um, so we usually put like where we think in the university it would best be applied for the creature. Um, I'm trying to think of an example we have off the top of my head. Centaur teacher? Oh yeah, centaurs are our teachers. Um, so stuff like that. And then we also talk about like if they were to appear in modern day society, like today, if they were to show up at your door, what kind of chaos and mayhem do you think they would cause? And would it be detrimental to the lives of humans? Ooh, okay. So I can go first kind of as an example. And Yeah. So with going on the mayhem, uh, I think the Wolver and our College of Monsters may be a good candidate for the lunch lady or lunch man for providing the school with fish to eat. I can get behind that, yeah. <laughs> It'd be only fish, but I'm sure some some monsters would like that. Probably Nessie. Yes, there'll be plenty. There'll be plenty that'll be on board with that. Oh yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's got to be at least a thousand ways that you can make a fish-based meal, so it'll never get boring. True. Uh, they never really specify which type of fish, so I'm going to guess he gets a variety of fish. Yeah, probably whatever he can fish up. I'm not sure what the local fish is in Shetland, but maybe like catfish or carp or bluegill or... Hmm. I think carp, maybe. Maybe even some salmon. Salmon would probably be a good fish. Oh, here we go. Haddock, coley, hake, place, and whiting are the most common ones. Okay. We don't have those over here that I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> I know haddock and place are fairly common in the UK in general. So that makes mm -hmm. sense. And Hake's quite popular in Scotland. We never really set a certain destination besides for our college. We'll just call it everywhere. Everywhere and nowhere. So any kind of fish is up for grabs. Even yes. better. I think he'd probably have fun trying to fish up like a uh, sunfish or one of those big bluefin tunas. Oh, very yeah. Very large fish. Like... I, I suspect the wolver would have a good time in Animal Crossing or like Stardew Valley or something like that. Just oh my like, god! Oh, I've never no, caught this fish all before. Yeah, all I <laughs> picture is all the like the dad jokes. Wolver would be lit. <laughs> all the dad jokes when he catches the fishies. Yeah. The wolver is the reason we have all these fishing mini games. <laughs> Especially requested it as a dev. They're just devs in the gaming world. Yes, they gotta uh, play nice with the wolver. That's why we can't find him anymore. He's just home playing fishing mini games. <laughs> I mean, since he got his Nintendo Switch, just doesn't need to go out anymore. That's, do you think he'd prefer the Nintendo Switch or like of the Wii, Nintendo Wii with the fishing pole accessory? Ooh, I bet he'd enjoy the Nintendo Wii. And the Switch might be a little bit small for his hands as well, because he's quite a big that, guy. That's true too. At least he has human hands. Well, he ha some depictions have him as claws, I've seen, but... Yeah, sort of halfway between human hands and uh, paws. Yeah. Does he have toe beans on top of his human hand? I think he does. I think he does have toe beans. That would be great. <laughs> that makes it better. That would be really, really awkward. Like if you were giving a, a wolf or a foot rub, and you just you get so distracted by the toe beans. <laughs> that would be really distracting. Do you have any other place you would place him in college, in the university? I think he could also do quite well as like um, an outdoorsman instructor, for want of a better description. So like if they'd got. Um, What's, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like orienteering or any kind of camping based um, classes, then the Wolver would be a, a really good fit for either acting as support or as a teacher for that. That's true. He'd never get lost in the woods. Exactly. I could see him like outside of college having a job being like a park ranger or something. Oh yeah, that would be cool. I, I could see that working out well for him. Or like a, a Bear Grylls style survivalist, but without being Bear Grylls, because the guy's odd. <laughs> Very. 
Do you have any place chaotic? No, I agree. I'm the only thing I would change is like, I don't know. I'm thinking, okay, so I don't know if you've played Disney Dreamlight, Silver, or Tan. Um, but like Goofy in particular likes fishing. So you make him your fishing buddy. And I don't know in what instance we would have a fishing buddy, but that's where he belongs. Maybe you can just hire him to be your fishing buddy. Or yeah. just invite him along for free. Because everybody needs a Goofy, even if that Goofy's a wolfer. I mean, they're both dogmen wolfmen yeah exactly exactly is that what goofy's based on oh maybe you never know <laughs> disney is known for stealing older folklore mm -hmm. ideas that is very true and uh george g geef is very strange he's wholesome though you said george g grief geef that's geef? goofy's actual name <laughs> okay i did not know that <laughs> Yep, they changed huh. it to officially be Goofy um, in the 60s, I want to say. But originally his name was George Geef, with Goofy being his nickname. I can see why they changed it officially. It's kind of a mouthful. Yeah, it doesn't really have the same ring as just calling him Goofy, does it? That would make his son Max Geef. It would. <laughs> Maximilian Geef. Uh, chaos in the modern world. I think it'd probably be little to none unless you rob their graves. Yeah, agreed. Like, uh, unless you count randomly receiving piles of fish on your doorstep as chaos. Uh, he's he's yeah. kind of the antithesis of chaos. <laughs> Just a nice guy. I mean, it's still kind of good to receive cow. Kyle's of fish, uh, <laughs> piles of fish, because if he only hands out the fish to certain people, you get free mm. supper. Yeah, exactly. I'm still not 100% sure how he knows someone's going to die or is sick in your household unless he's watching your family. <laughs> it could be like, so dogs and cats are quite sensitive to changes in things like electromagnetic fields and things like that um so it could be that because he does have that level of wolfishness in him maybe he can smell the change in the air or something like that and he's just like okay this the smell is here this this smell is the bad smell i will be here with fish <laughs> that is true i keep I keep forgetting that he is more wolf and little to no man. Mm. So he has all those same instincts. Yeah. Well, we we assume he does. We we don't because of there being so little in terms of like actual reports of the wolver that are written down, it's difficult to tell, but we can make True. that sort of assumption based on what we have been able to find, I guess. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> true. Uh, I think he'd be more helpful, though, than harmful. Oh, definitely. Unless overfishing becomes an issue. Mm. See, I was wondering about that, and I think because there are supposed to be so few of these wolvers, and because they keep to themselves so much, I feel like overfishing wouldn't be an issue. I, th I think be f be fairly safe from that. Unless the wolver started giving more fish gifts and therefore needing to do more fishing. Yeah, that's a good explanation. I like it. Uh, that's all I had. Anything else to add? Nothing from me that I can think of. What about you, Chaotic? No, I like I said, I came into this blind and I was mostly learning along with you guys. And I've really enjoyed all of the information. I've This, is a, this has easily become probably one of my new favorite monsters. Gotta love a good boy, right? Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm really glad that I've got to share this uh, wonderfully wholesome cryptid with you both and that we can get their story out there a little bit more as well. Because I think it is, like, it's nice that there are so many cryptids out there that uh, people can 
appreciate and so much cool folklore, but so much of it is scary or bad in some way or another. Like the the, the monsters do terrible things to people, and I just love the the balance of that with the wolver, where the wolver's just like, nah. You leave me alone, I'll leave you alone unless you need something and then I'll be there to be your furry friend. I really enjoyed having you on and also looking up this monster. It was super fun. I used to learning something about a wholesome monster for once. I'm very appreciative that you folks invited me on in the first place. Uh, I, I really do appreciate it and I've had a really fun time doing this as well. Well, we um we tend to reuse guests a lot. So if you would ever like to come back, please know that you can do that. And we run um we run like guest only episodes where any of our guests that have been on can come back and we kind of do like one big group thing with all the guests and it gets crazy. So Oh cool. Well, I am a massive uh mythology and cryptids nerd, so I would gladly come back for future episodes if you have me. Yeah. Uh I I did find the giant otter monsters name oh oh god it is called a dobar doberchu doberku it's a doberku it's another it's irish monster oh i, I am terrible at irish pronunciations <laughs> oh is it dovershu it might be dovershu that's probably what it is i probably mispronounced it during the entire episode oh i, I wouldn't worry about it if i were you Honestly, I've probably got it wrong as well. The The little mm -hmm. flick over the U is the thing that throws me off the most. Yes. <laughs> I don't even know how to make that on the keyboard. Eh, me either. <laughs> Thank our patrons of Mondi, Ruby, and Mage. Do you have any news, Chaotic? Um, I do not. We're participating in some LGBTQ tourneys, which is important, of course, because we support and love doing all of that. So um, I do have two tourneys I'm coming up in. Um, they will be towards the end of the month. I'm not hosting or doing anything. Um, we are making progress on the new book podcast. Uh, that first episode should be out next month. So July would be our first month of uh, publishing. So be on the lookout for that. Okay. And Javi Tan, Tan, would you like to plug yourself? Maybe like to where we can people can find you at. Uh yeah, sure thing. I am Hobby Tan basically everywhere on the internet. Um, but most of the time you'll find me over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash hobby tan. Um and occasionally, like on the thirteenth of June, you might just find me on other channels because I am going to be doing a Crow Country speedrun for Indie Horror Speedrun's Summer Marathon um, on the 13th of June over on their channel. But yeah, most of the time you just find me on my own channel. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Blue Sky. There is a link to my Discord on both Twitter and on my Twitch as well if you're interested in joining that. Nice. We're also on Blue Sky. <laughs> And Tan's channel is wonderful to be in. It's one of my, the the most casual places to lurk, which obviously after listening to this episode, you guys will know Tan's voice is absolutely wonderful. Um, and they are absolutely wonderful to listen to, so you should stop in on Twitch. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> that, that's very sweet of you. I'm a little flustered now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we got all of our episodes up on YouTube now. So you, listeners, you can comment stuff on there chaotic with the outro thank you for listening to the monsters Miss and mayhem podcast silver and chaotic take you into the depth of the lore and discuss how these legends could affect modern day society you can find us on apple Podcasts, spotify iHeartRadio, or almost any podcast service easiest to you dive into the depths of chaos with us every wednesday bar silver and chaotic not missing their scheduling and consider joining the podcast discord or twitter following even more insider looks and even some D, &D sessions if you'd like some extra special inside looks or even want to be a guest on the show, consider helping us via Patreon. Your help makes such a big difference to us both. Until next time, Mythics, you never know what kind of mayhem we might get into.